The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hey Ben, you got some mail. What is it? I'll give you a hint. It contains something purple. Hmm. Oh, is it the Osh Park boards for the Hex board game? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, nice. Okay, so in a previous episode, we made a PCB breadboard prototype of the Hex Logic game. Then we made a laser paint version of it. Mm -hmm. Then we refined that design in Eagle and then sent off for some boards from Osh Park. So we should have three boards, right? Yep. So let's do this. In today's episode, I'm going to solder up the first one and make sure that it works since I designed it. Mm -hmm. And then once I've confirmed that, I think it'd be cool if Felix coached you and Max on how to solder up the other two. You could try out some surface mount for the first time. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. I've never done surface mount soldering before. Yeah, I think it would be a good barometer because uh, you know Felix was talking about how this could be a good kit for school. Mm -hmm. So if you guys can do it, students could do it. So yeah, I think that'd be fun. Let's get started soldering. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, we got the PCBs in from Osh Park for the Hex game. What I'm gonna do is solder it up, make sure everything works. I mean, in theory, this is pretty much the same as the laser paint version that we made, but you never know. I also have to program a few things differently. Instead of having two switches for game, free play, hex, uh, binary, I just have one button for select, because that's easier. Although I will have to reprogram it a little bit to take that into account. Also, there's a fourth digit now. So I'm thinking we could use that for like status display or, or something or have a heck H or a B to tell you what mode you're in. So I'll need to program that in as well. But anyway, once I have this soldered and reprogrammed, then we're going to have both Max and Karen take a whack at soldering it themselves because they have less experience soldering than Felix and I. So it might be a good barometer of whether or not this is a good you know solder teaching kit. I mean, one of the parts is a little small, this uh, knot gate here. And we could actually remove that. It would just require using an extra line from the microcontroller, which we do have available. I could also reflow this. I did just get in some new solder paste, but I think I'll just do it by hand. There are some parts on the back as well. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna go through, solder everything and talk about what the parts are as I go along. Hey, I can give you some surface mount soldering tips. Okay, so this is a SOIC 16 package. This is the output shift register, one of them that will drive the display. So what I like to do is I'll put a little bit of solder on one of the corner pads like this. Then I'll bring the chip over, heat up the pad, and then slide it into position like that. Then I will make sure that it's straight or straight enough. I mean, as long as the, the pins aren't overlapping, that's straight enough. So what I'll do here just to make sure it's locked in position is I will solder the opposite end. Have you ever like built a box or something out of like wood and screws? When you do that, you should always go like corner, 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 corner. Same thing here. So now that I have those two in place, I can just go in and hit the rest. Remember, uh, soldering is about heating up the piece with your iron and then bringing the solder in. You can also do like a flood fill. I mean, this isn't a very small pitch, but I can give you an example. So see how the surface tension of the solder pulls it away from each pin? And then in the last one, you can just clean off your tip a little bit grab the solder and pull it away just like that. Or you can just do it individually. But a lot of people think that you have to have the motor skills to do every pin individually on service mount, and that's not necessarily true. You just have to get solder on everything and make sure there's uh, nothing, you know, short circuiting. So watch this, I'll clean off my tip, and I'll come in from the side, because the surface tension works with the um, solder on the iron as well. And here we go, I'll clean up the flux afterwards. Cool, now we'll do the other one, and then I'll move on. Although I realize this has been soldered on upside down. I did a stupid mistake. I wired that chip on upside down. I didn't look at the indicator right here on the board. See that little notch right there? That indicates where pin one is. Now, sometimes chip might not have a really obvious pin one indicator. I mean, this one kind of has it, but another way you can tell is the way the text is going. So if the text is going from left to right in that direction, pin one is always to the left of the text. So I can read the text going in this direction, which means that's pin one. So that might be something that could trip up a novice. It tripped me up 
uh, the fact that the chip, you know, all the chips in the front of the unit are, they're all going in the same direction, but these are upside down. Now the reason they're upside down is because that made it, it was easier to trace the schematic with them upside down. It was shorter traces and less vias. So it makes sense from a design standpoint, but it might be a little tricky for someone just starting out. They were like, why is it upside down? Okay, time for some surface mount resistors. I typically try to design things using no smaller than 0805 surface mount resistors because most of the stuff we build here, we also assemble ourselves, the boards I mean. So what I usually do is I heat up a pad, put some solder on it, and I slide the resistor into place like that. Then I come back and I heat up the other side of the resistor and flow some solder into it, completing the connection. So what can happen sometimes is your resistors can tombstone your favorite movie. Actually not Max's favorite movie. Can't believe that. You are unforgiven for not thinking Tombstone is the best. Well, anyway, uh, again, you can end up like that sometimes, standing on end, tombstoning. Like, if you don't have proper solder paste on something like this and you put it in an oven, they will stand up on end. I mean, a lot of, actually, not, not a lot, most of soldering is just understanding how the solder flows when it heats up. Okay, I'm gonna finish these up and then we'll move on to some transistors. Your handedness is actually fairly important in soldering. So I'm right-handed, so I tend to solder things from left to right. But if I was left-handed, I would probably solder things from right to left. Uh, here's a good example. See how I have these four resistors to the left of some transistors here? I'm gonna solder in the resistors first. See how my iron's going off to the right like that? That's because, obviously, I'm right-handed when I solder. So if those transistors were in place before I did this, I might bump into them. But by soldering from left to right, since my solder iron is in my right hand, uh, that avoids conflicts. See, even there, see how I'm accidentally like getting some solder on those pads? Uh, which is not a big deal, but if there was already parts there, I could be accidentally heating them up or messing something up. So, see those resistors? I didn't do a, s a very good job of soldering them, because I was trying to watch out for this. So I'm going to heat up or flow some solder on the left side of them. Okay, let's put on these PNP transistors, which are also surface mount. Here's something else, like if your tip becomes magnetized, that can be a problem. Uh, you might think, oh, it's convenient, it's holding the part, but you know, it might not be like in the position that you want it to be. All right, so kind of like the resistors, I'm going to hold these as flat as possible, heat up the center pin, and then press down on it as I apply more heat. Now, see how we had some uh, solder there already? That kind of prevented me from pushing it fully down. We can fix that, we can get some solder wick, which is just braided copper, and we can use that to suck up the solder to make the surface flat again. See that? It doesn't actually take a lot of solder to just make a part stay in place. So you can see it a little bit on there just to hold it in place while you do the other pins. I could be using a finer solder tip, but I think this one will suffice. There we go. Guess I could install these displays now. All right, so these are through hole components. So what I like to do is I, I make sure I, I put this down like this and lay it flat and push on it so the components are as flush to the board as possible. So we don't have like that happening, right? Okay, so I'm gonna lay it down like this. Now I'm gonna tilt it up to make sure it's at the flat angle like that. And that's why I always have foam on my board. Basically it's so uh, things don't get scratched or marred. So just like before, I'm gonna just hit the corners. Corner, 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 corner. And now it'll stay put, allowing me to solder the rest of the pins with reckless abandon. So I usually like to, well, as you can see, I come in from both sides. So really you're supposed to heat up the part and then bring in the solder. And see, like this right here, since my tip isn't pointy enough, that's why I didn't get a good hit there. So I'm, these tips usually have a little bit of a notch on them. So if I come in like that, that way I'm ensuring that I'm heating up the pad and the pin to get a good solder bond. You have to flow the heat through both items and the solder will fo follow along. All right, I got the segmented displays in place. What I'm gonna do next is solder on the LEDs. You should think about the height of your components when you're doing this. Do the lowest things first. So the lowest things opposite the side of what hand you use. So the lowest items on the left, which I kind of violated by putting these in place, so your mileage may vary. So before I put in the five millimeter LEDs or these toggle switches, I'm gonna make sure I put in these surface mount resistors because otherwise, It'd be really hard to get at them later. All right, let's do the tack switches again. I'm gonna solder one pad, grab the switch. These are surface mount tack switches. Hmm, they don't quite match the landing pattern. Oh well, I'll just center them as best I can. We're just using switches we have laying around. That should be fine. 
So I get one in place and now the other. I'll get these two in place. I won't mount this one though until I get the other integrated circuits mounted around it because again, start with the low stuff and work your way up to the high stuff. No, I won't let you kill the natives. I am Mel Gibson, a shining beacon of understanding and compassion. <laughs> All right, what do we got left? We need a uh, 1K resistor for the transistor. Actually, let's do the uh, re really small knot gate. All right, this component is really small. This might not be appropriate as a learning tool. But same thing, I'm gonna solder up a pad, put it in place. All right, so this one, I'm not even gonna try to solder these three pins individually because it's pretty much impossible. This is definitely a case where I'm just gonna flood it and wick it. So you just, there we go. I mean, I flooded the via next to it, but that's not a big deal. Cool, it worked. So when you're uh, putting these kind of things into a solder oven, the same actions happen. You put the paste down, and then as the solder heats up, it basically pulls the part toward the nearest pad. So it's kind of like when you see like one of those little bugs floating on the water. Same kind of thing, or like how drops of water, you know, connect to each other. The solder wants to be in a certain shape. It wants to be like a fluid ball, and it will actually move parts around in order to achieve that shape and that can actually help you. Like when you put things in an oven, you actually see parts move slightly as the solder melts beneath them. All right, it looks like that part's attached. Um, now I'm gonna do these uh, input shift registers. They're also a little small. We'll do the same method. Grab them here, out of my bin. Okay, so these, there is a pretty obvious a pin one indicator. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a, like a circle, right? But you can also see the text is going from left to right from the side of the circle. So that's another way you could tell as well. Again, I'm just gonna flood these, but I'll get one pin set in place and I'm gonna slide it over. Now it's crooked on that one side, so I can probably just move it a little bit there and it'll be all right. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna anchor it with a little bit of solder. I'm gonna come over here and flood it. After I flood it, I'm gonna push down on the chip and flood it again to make sure it's as flat as possible. There we go. Come back around and do the same thing to the other side flood it. And the reason I'm flooding it is because I can transfer the heat to all the pins at once through the liquid solder. It's kind of like when you cook something. If you have something in water, it can cook faster because the water is transferring the heat to the item better than air does. So now I'm just going to use a little bit of solder wick. Sometimes with the solder wick, I'll turn up the heat on my iron a little bit. I probably don't need to do it here though. I'm just going to remove just a little bit of it because, you know, you can also potentially remove too much with solder wick. Then I'm just gonna pull out my magnifying glass to make sure I have it on all the pins. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna finish up the, uh, actually, let's slap in the AT Tiny while we're here. Okay, a little bit of AT Tiny. Okay, so this one, oh, there's a little triangle there and I can also see the text going from left to right. So these have a little asterisk indicator for pin one. The pin one indicator is gonna be part of your uh, top place silk screen layer and that's in the uh, eagle part itself. So it's up to the part designer to actually draw a silk screen indicator where pin one is. And if they don't, you won't know where pin one is. At least by looking at it, you should still know from your design where pin one is. So I'm gonna hit both sides like I did before. This is a pretty pretty wide pitch. I can just kind of do that, no problem. Bingo. All right, let's get the other shift register in place. So I'm not gonna necessarily worry about aligning it perfectly because when you add solder, that's like I mentioned in the oven, that would pull it and move it as well. I'm gonna get as close as I can, make sure it's equal on both sides. I can actually move it a little bit since it's only anchored by that one side. Now I wanna make sure I hit the other side with solder before I do this. Because if I heat up this side, it's not gonna have an anchor point on this side, which means it still could potentially move. Actually, I could do that on purpose just to show you. I'll just do it wrong. See, right there, it slipped. So it's better to just get a little bit of an anchor on both sides and then worry about your final positioning. Also, by flooding it with solder, you uh, ensure that enough heat is going to it. Because, you know, you might get something like a cold solder joint where it looks like it's soldered, but it isn't. You hit it in the side, bam, do it all at once, just like that. So I'm just gonna come in here. That's, the reason I'm doing this is just to make sure I didn't remove too much. Kind of reflowing a little bit, making sure uh, we have a nice, you know, a nice connection. Oh, see now here, my right-handedness could melt my LEDs if I'm not careful, so. Although being right-handed, I have a better chance of living longer, so. Ying yang, sorry, Max. All right, time to put on the larger through-hole components. I think I'm gonna go with green LEDs this time. Yeah, even LEDs, I mean, I've, I do have some tips. So like hold your fingers on them like that, right? Because if you don't install LEDs straight, they won't look good. And obviously I've run out of hands at this point, so I'm just gonna put on just, just a tiny little bit of solder, just enough to hold it in place. See like that? Now 
I'm going to go in and flood the other side of it that I didn't hit with solder because if I hit the other side, it would come loose. See, now that one's properly soldered. Now I can come back and reflow this properly. Now the LED is soldered in place and it's perfectly flush. Then I like to collect all the snipped pins and I put them into my snipped pin bin. So I'm just going to put that in. I'm going to turn it on its side. Yeah. That'll work. Same thing, I'm gonna hold it with my finger. So obviously this is not proper because I'm just bringing solder to it and that's why it's also not doing a very good job. But it does a good enough job to hold it, allowing me to then do a good job. Ta-da! Okay, check this out. I'm gonna do the header for the programmer. So what I like to do is I like to actually plug them into the thing that's going to program it to make sure they're properly, uh, properly aligned to the jack that's gonna be used. Then I put them in place. That way there's no surprises. Same thing, I'm gonna solder the quarters, make sure it's flat seems to be, and finish it off. All right, if we give it power, the LED should at least turn on. Sweet, actually I like how those green look. All right, it's all together, so the next thing to do is to try and program it. I think I have pretty much everything working, except the piezo buzzer. Yeah, the circuit that I wired up works with a transducer speaker, like a normal speaker, but not a piezo. The audio is there, it's just very, very quiet. Anyway, so we have uh, hex free mode, then uh, hex game mode, so it's like hex, high score, five, decimal free mode, decimal game mode. I uh, put in some defines where it will uh, reset the position of the decimal point whenever you switch. So whenever you switch a mode, it always says high and then the number first, instead of like, you know, catching it in between, which look kind of sloppy. It consumes more code space, but it looks nicer. So I can just keep going through it forever. Then I can hit start and go into hex mode. F5. All right, the base game works. There are a few things I wanna do besides trying to fix the audio, and one is to um, have the high score go higher than 255. Um, yeah, so I've gotta save some more memory so I can waste other memory having two bytes per high score, which would allow a number from zero to 65,535. Hey, well, we're here, we have our uh, boards and you two are going to be soldering. Woo! So we're gonna be your test subjects, huh? Yep. Because we don't solder that much. Yeah, we definitely don't. You solder more than I do. And it's good to see you two in front of the camera. I'm gonna get you started doing the surface mount on the back, and then we'll flip over to the front, and when I think you guys are ready, we'll try the, uh, the knot gate here, because I wanna see how well you can do that part there. Let's, Let's get, get soldering! soldering. You two have done quite a job getting these hex flash games soldered together. You did great. Um, we got them flashed and they work wonderful. Tell me what you two think about the experience. Uh, I think for the most part it was pretty easy. There were some of these resistors that um, uh, I had to redo, but I think that was more my error than the design. What do you think, Karen? Uh, well, this was the first time I ever soldered a surface mount part and uh, it wasn't as bad as I expected. Mm -hmm. um, there were some points where I wasn't sure if I actually had a solid connection on the surface mount part because I tinned the pad first uh, and then soldered onto it afterwards and I wasn't sure if it fl flowed, flued, flowed, flued, <laughs> flued. Floaty flued. Uh, I wasn't sure if the solder was flowing under the component to the pad or not. So, I mean. Yeah, I had that problem with my resistors. Let's turn them on. I tested mine with a speaker, but it's not the final speaker, so I removed mine, so mine doesn't beep, but that's on purpose. My favorite game mode is a game mode that doesn't exist yet, which is speed counting, dragster counting. Felix has his own mode called counting mode, yeah. where he just uh, counts. 
Nice. Oh yeah, and you got like different colors there. Yeah, you've got yeah. like the Christmas light colors. Christmas I decided colors. to do, uh, I separated them by, by bit, by bit. Mm -hmm. You have the upper and lower. Uh, nibble. Yeah. nibble. Nibble. Separated them by nibble. I don't know my terms. I like your, uh, yeah. Yours is much more logical than mine. Well, Karen, it was a lot of fun putting together the PCB versions of the Hex game. I see you're still fiddling with it. What? Oh, you made a case for it. I did. Well, you were making that 3D printed case yesterday. Yeah, it didn't, didn't quite work out. Darn large pieces. Oh, it, the warping wasn't the problem. I just didn't design it with enough tolerance. It also took a long time to, to print, but it did. I mean, it's got a nice curved edge. But uh, what do you got there? Laser cut? Uh, yeah, I did laser cuts. Um, it's a little rudimentary, and it would require some other revisions, like this button is now buried. Mm -hmm. So we would have to get a button that has like. Well, a that's long. the reset button. You don't actually need to push it. So, yes, I mean, I did that on purpose so that now you have to like reach in there with like a thing. Yeah. You can't accidentally push it. That's all we have for today. So you saw Max and I solder this kit up. Would you purchase this as a kit? If not, what would you like different about it? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Hey, let's go for the high score. Okay, but you're gonna beat me. I do have the high score right now. Or does Max? Ha 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 You beat yeah. my score? On 266. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just glad the high score went past 255, which means it proves the 16-bit high score storage function is working. Nice. Because you, you have to use two bytes to store a number past 255. Nice. Sweet. That said, I, I, I must now beat you. <laughs> You I'll guys be are gonna be the guinea pigs. Yeah. Give me like a cute little guinea pig. Like, mur, 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 I'm a guinea pig. Okay, maybe without the teeth. Well, like the cheeks, right? Stop describing me as a guinea, guinea pig. Guinea pig bridge. Give me something to do. You tiny ghost. Karen, what have you got there? It's the prototype that Felix made for the mini pinball kit. In today's episode, Felix and I are going to work on translating this prototype into an eagle design. Okay, I'm putting together the PCB for the mini pinball machine. Power comes in through this 2.1 millimeter jack. I think I may be forced to make a part manually. It's not a very well-drawn part, so it must be a part that I drew myself. 